So Huawei have recently announced the Kirin 980 and it's their new processor that's gonna find its way into the Huawei Mate 20, which is gonna be announced in October. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now, if you're wondering about the Kirin 980, what does it all mean? Then please, let me explain. First of all, I just wanna say great that you could join me for this video today. So we're gonna be looking at the architecture of the Kirin 980, as well as some aspects of its performance. So let's just jump straight into it. And when we look at the CPU side of this processor, we see that Huawei have gone with the Cortex-A76 and the Cortex-A55. And that's important for two reasons. First of all, compared to the previous generation, the, the Kirin 970, which used the Cortex-A73, Huawei have made a generational leap. They've leapt over the Cortex-A75 and gone straight with the Cortex-A76. That means that when you compare the performance of the 980 compared to the 970, you're gonna see big CPU performance gains. Secondly, it means that now that Huawei are using Dynamic, which is a new way of organizing the CPU cores inside of the SOC so that you can have up to eight processor cores in the same cluster. Now I have whole videos on the Cortex A76 and another video on Dynamic, and you'll find links to those in the description below. Now traditionally, when we talk about heterogeneous multiprocessing, we talk about four high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. So previously, you might have had, let's say, the Cortex-A73, uh, four of those, and then the Cortex-A53, four of those. But now with the Kirin 980, things are slightly different. Yes, there are four Cortex-A76 cores and there are four Cortex-A55 cores, but actually they're configured in a two plus two plus four setup. That's because the first two Cortex-A76 cores have a max clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz. Then the next two Cortex-A76 cores have a max speed of 1.92 gigahertz. And then finally, you get the four Cortex-A55 cores and they're clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. What this allows Huawei to do is to give good single thread performance because one of those faster clocked Cortex A76 cores will be used. And then when it gets into a very multi-threaded situation, you've got four Cortex A76 cores and then of course a total of eight cores, including those Cortex A55 cores. So that should make the overall performance, both single threaded and multi-threaded, significantly higher in the Kirin 980. Let's just talk a bit about the manufacturing of this. This is a seven nanometer processor, the latest, newest node that is available from TSMC. And Huawei are proud that they are one of the first to be on seven nanometer. And it's actually got 6.9 billion transistors in it. And that's up from the 5.5 billion transistors that you find in the Kirin 970. Let's just talk GPU for a moment. The Kirin 980 has got the uh, Mali G76 with 10 cores inside of it, and it will offer a 46% performance increase compared to the Kirin 970, which had the Mali G72 inside of it. So we're looking again for significant CPU increases and significant GPU increases. A few other things worth mentioning now is that the uh, 980 has got two NPU units, the NPU units that we found first of all in the Kirin 970, that's now been doubled up in the Kirin 980, and it should have 120% performance of the Kirin 970 when it comes to NPU processing. And again, I've got a whole video about NPUs uh, and how they work in the 970. And it's basically the same story in the 980. And you can find links to that in the description below. It's also worth noting that the 980 uses a higher clock speed uh, LPDDR4 memory, which should give you about a 14% increase in overall memory bandwidth. As I mentioned earlier, this new CPU uses dynamic, which means now for the first time we have a processor from Huawei that has level three cache. And compared to, for example, the Snapdragon 845, which had two megabytes of level three cache, Huawei have opted for four megabytes of level three cache in the 980. And again, that will have a significant improvement on the overall performance of this processor. As you expect, the processor has all the other things you would need inside of it, including a new and improved uh, uh, image signal processor and new and improved LTE uh, modems, this time CAT21 and CAT18. So let's just talk performance for a moment. The figures that Huawei are quoting, and we can only go by what Huawei are quoting at the moment, 
is that in the single thread score for Geekbench, the Kirin 980 will get a score of 3360, which is 37% greater than the current single threaded score of the Snapdragon 845. And when it comes to GPU gains, of course, again, Huawei are quoting a big improvement and they're saying that the GPU in the 980 is faster than the GPU in the Snapdragon 845. But there are two quick caveats for that. One is that that needs to have the uh, GPU boost technology enabled and that's something that has to be built into the game itself. It's not something you get automatically. The game has to support that technology to get that extra frame rate. And secondly, there are accusations that Huawei have been cheating a little when it comes to benchmarks to kind of bump up the performance when it sees a benchmark running. So really we're gonna have to wait until we get the Mate 20 in our hands to see what the real benchmark figures are. And the context of all of this, of course, is that when it comes to the Android ecosystem, they are comparing it to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845. And we know that probably Qualcomm will have a new chip that they're gonna announce sometime in December for new handsets that are gonna appear in 2019. But of course, the point is that now you can actually get the Mate 20 in 2018 with this processor, with the Cortex A76, with the latest Mali processor. Okay, so there you have it, the new Kirin 980, the latest cores from ARM, the latest GPUs, faster memory, better NPU, new improved uh, image signal processor. So it looks like a really good package. So my name is Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe and please do hit that bell notification icon so you get notified whenever we drop a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.